Hello, welcome to Tron Tutorials. My name is Firoz Lakani. In this episode, we're going to discuss the differences or more about the similarities between developing on Ethereum and Tron. Now, we're not going to get too complicated when it comes to creating your smart contracts. We're going to use very simple smart contracts. Uh, for Ethereum, we're actually going to use Open Zeppelin to generate a smart contract for us. And then on the Tron blockchain, I'm going to show you how similar the process is exactly by actually deploying the same ERC20 contract that we're going to create for Ethereum. We're also going to deploy onto the Tron blockchain. Um, and then real quick, I'll also show you the template for the TRC20 token and how you can create one of those yourself as well. Um, so without further ado, we're going to jump right in. As you can see, I, I'd like to start my day off on the Tron Developer Hub, ch catch up with any changes that have been made. Um, there's a, a lot of interesting information and resources available through the Tron Developer Hub. Uh, to create our smart contract on Ethereum, today we're actually going to use, as I said, Open Zeppelin, which is a very useful resource uh, if you're just getting into smart contracts and uh, you know coding and, and deploying to a blockchain. So you'll see a lot about the different token standards, um, including governance, cross-chain utilities, um, and then different APIs for these uh, different feature sets and tokens. So today we're gonna jump right into the wizard, which is a very cool tool. It will generate a smart contract for you based on the information that you enter here. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and create an ERC20 token and for the name, we're going to name it, let's see, let's drop a sneakerhead token. And then for the token symbol, we can do sneak. And we're going to pre-mint, um, let's say, 150,000 of these. And so as you can see, as you type the information into the boxes here, it will actually generate those same fields into the smart contract for you here, um, or more so sneakerhead here, the token name here, as well as the token symbol here. Um, it usually, okay, I was gonna say, it usually adds a section for pre-mint. Now, okay, you'll see what I did. I actually put a comma in, which is going to mess up the code because commas don't work when you're counting numbers in a smart contract. So you gotta be careful when you're entering things, uh, make sure that it's populating over onto the smart contract properly. So now we've gone and corrected that and we've got 150,000 that are going to be minted. And these are actually going to be minted. As you can see, this constructor argument is part of the smart contract, even when it comes to minting it. So the, the wallet that deploys the smart contract will be the wallet to receive these tokens once they are minted. From there, the user is welcome to transfer those uh, tokens to any other wallet on the corresponding blockchain. So we're going to go ahead and take this contract. Uh, as you can see, I already have Remix open here. Remix is going to be our integrated development environment for Ethereum. Um, it also works with other Ethereum EVM compatible blockchains if you have those networks properly added into your MetaMask wallet. Uh, we're not going to get into what all of that means, but if you know what that means, then you understand what I'm talking about. Um, for this example, we're just going to go ahead and copy this code right here into the Remix IDE. So you see here the default workspace already has uh, some things created. Now, I honestly, I want to just create a new workspace. I want a, a clean workspace to work with. So we're going to go ahead and do a blank one. And this is going to be my sneakerhead workspace because this is where I'm creating the sneakerhead contract. New contract. Sneakerhead. we go ahead and paste. And so you see the contract is actually importing another contract from Open Zeppelin's GitHub. So this is going to have more of the token standard information for ERC20. Um, it'll also connect to the metadata for your, your contract. So now that we've got the contract here, we can jump into the compiler page and we're going to compile this smart contract. As you see, it's been compiled, it's ready to go. All of these other contracts have been imported based on this import um, and the contracts that are going to be imported underneath that one. Um, so you've got all of the ERC20 
the interface for ERC-20, the metadata, as well as the context uh, contract, in addition to your main sneaker head contract. Now that we've compiled it, we can jump over to deploy and run. Um, and before we deploy this, I'm actually gonna take this same smart contract and we're gonna go ahead and use it in the Tron development environment. Uh, so here you can see I've imported a, a token format or a token um, template here so that we can create a TRC20 token with the related TRC token contracts underneath. So we can actually create one here by doing a very similar process and changing the information within the smart contract. Um, this is for future use. Right now, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same process that I did on the Remix IDE. So you can see how similar the process is for creating, compiling, and deploying smart contracts. Um, if you have experience on Ethereum, you can literally bring those same smart contracts. And for the most part, they will operate on Tron. Uh, so we're gonna create this workspace called the Sneakerhead Workspace. And you'll see, so there's no blank option uh, on the Tron IDE. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete the pre-populated contracts that are in here. And I'm just going to create a new document. And this is going to be my sneakerhead contract for Tron. And I'm gonna paste the exact same contract from the Remix uh, IDE. I'm gonna pull over to the Tron IDE, paste the same information in and we're going to go ahead and compile this smart contract. Boom. So you see, same thing here. It's going to import the same contracts that were imported on the Remix IDE for Ethereum. You'll see the ERC-20, the interface contract, the metadata, as well as the context, uh, in addition to the sneakerhead contract that we pasted ourselves. Now that all of these have been entered, compiled, um, or imported and compiled properly, we can jump over to the deploy tab on here. Um, so now I'm gonna show you the similarities when it comes to deploying your smart contract on both of these networks. So here, there's one thing that you wanna make sure is which network you're connected to. So if you are accidentally connected to your main Ethereum network or main Tron network in your wallet, that's uh, your, your browser extension wallet, that is the network that you're going to be deploying to. So in this example, we're connected to the test nets because we are running test transactions. Um, again, if you wanna to deploy to the mainnet, all you have to do is change your wallet to the mainnet and that's where your contract will deploy. So for this instance, we jump over to MetaMask, which is connected to the Gurley network, which is going to be the test net that we are deploying to on MetaMask. You'll see not the mainnet, um, we've got a couple other test nets, Polygon and Binance Smart Chain as well. Um, so we're gonna stick with the Gorley test net. That's where we wanna deploy. And really all we have to do is make sure the correct contract is selected, correct environment, and then we're gonna deploy. All the work has been done for us, contract has been created, um, and all the prerequisite contracts have been imported automatically. All we gotta do is confirm the transaction and you've sent your smart contract off to the Ethereum blockchain and nobody can stop it. So that being said, the creation of Sneakerhead is pending. We can jump onto the Etherscan tracker uh, and look at the progress that's happening here. While we wait for that, we're gonna go over to the Tron IDE and run the same exact process. So you'll see here, we don't wanna deploy to the virtual machine. We wanna deploy using the injected Tron web, uh, which is going to use our Tron link wallet here. Very similar MetaMask. Um, it will also inject your smart contract directly into the connected network, which in this case is connected to the Tron Shasta testnet. Um, again, make sure you've got the correct environment, you've got the correct contract selected, and click deploy. And down here, you'll be able to see once we sign the transaction, you'll notice, let's close this, and creation of sneakerhead pending. So once we've deployed to the Tron test network, we can actually check down here for the deployed contracts and you'll see the contract address can be copied right there. And you'll also see all the information you can actually interact with your contract uh, directly through this environment right here. 
and we're going to go over to TronScan, and we're going to go and we're going to check the status of this contract deployment. So once you go to TronScan, you do want to make sure that you are on the correct version. So currently, we're looking at the main version of TronScan, which is going to scan the test or the main net, not the test net. Over here on the top right, you can select if you want to scan Nile or Shasta test nets. We're going to select Shasta because that's where we've deployed. And then I'm just going to go ahead and check my wallet address and see what we've been up to. So it looks like a smart contract was created and deployed um, and it was confirmed. Smart contract uh, sneakerhead. There we go. So that's cool. We did create a token. Um, I don't see the allocated tokens. It may still have to create them on the back end and send them to the wallet. But at this point, we have created, compiled, and deployed a smart contract to both the Ethereum and Tron test networks. If we wanted to deploy to either of the main networks for the related uh, blockchains, all we would have to do is change where our wallet is connected. And that's where the next smart contract will be deployed to automatically. And for the builders already working on innovative ideas in the Tron and BitTorrent chain ecosystems or on multi-chain solutions that incorporate them, we invite you to visit trondao.org backslash hackathon to learn more about our current hackathons and prize pools. We hope to see you there. Thank you for watching this episode of Tron Dao Tutorials. We hope you were able to learn something new. To learn more about the Tron ecosystem, visit trondao.org or join in on the conversation at forum.trondao.org. Once again, I'm Feroz Lakani, and I hope to see you on the next episode of Tron Dao Tutorials.